Hey guys, welcome back to TechLogic Lounge. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to configure LDAP authentication with your PFSense firewall so that you guys can actually log into the device or even log into your VPN using your LDAP credentials. And I'm going to give you guys three different variations of the configuration because of course your LDAP configuration might be a little bit different than mine. And I ended up finding three different ways to do it after bashing my head against the desk for hours trying to get it to work. And I hope I can actually make this a little bit easier for you guys to do. But anyways, let's stop wasting your time and let's go ahead and actually get into the video. Alrighty, so quick note before we jump into the lab, uh, I'm going to show you three different variations of it. Uh, one is using postix groups, the other is using group of names, and then the third is actually going to be using the member of uh, open LDAP module that you can enable as well if you uh, have that. And of course, you're going to want to use the method that is best suited for your current LDAP schema, or you can change it up if you want. Uh, but I'm just going to show you three different ways I was able to get it to work. Let's jump into the lab now. And I'm actually already logged into the majority of this stuff here. So first thing I want to show you is that test LDAP server I created. This is very basic. I've got an OU for groups and an OU for users. Um, I've got two groups in here. One is going to be a group of names, which is this PF test. You can see here it's a group of names. And then the other is PF tester, which is another group and it's going to have postix group and now in each of these groups i'm going to have both these users we got joe rogan over here he's in both of them and that just made it uh easy to mess with when i was doing it uh when i was configuring this and then the rock as well they're in the same groups uh joe rogan's just going to be used for the bind account uh, so that he can actually query the entire uh, base dn obviously you're going to want to reuse whatever bind account you have and then the rock is the one we'll actually be logging into everything with so now let's go ahead and go over to the pf sense uh, this is my base dashboard I'll go to system and then user manager. From here, we're gonna to go to authentication servers. You probably only have local database in here so far. You're just gonna go ahead and click add. And the first configuration option we are gonna do is the group of names. So from here, I'm just gonna put test LDAP and group of names. And you're gonna to wanna to leave the type LDAP. Now host name, this is gonna be the host name of the LDAP server. So Obviously, you're going to want to put what yours is. Now, I'm using uh, unencrypted LDAP for this test. You can obviously use encrypted if you'd like. And if that's the case, you're going to want to switch your port value to probably 636. And you'll probably want to go ahead and switch this to uh, start TLS encrypted or SSL TLS, depending on what your setup is. But in this case, we're just keeping it unencrypted. And you might need to obviously switch your CA settings here, your certificate authority settings. I'm not doing any of that, so I'm just going to leave it as global root CA list. Just going to leave all the defaults for the protocol and server timeout now for search scope so in this case i am going to do the entire subtree and then the base dn in my case is going to be dc equals test dc equals com yours is going to be whatever your base dn is and now with the group of names objects the only way i could get this to work is to buy is by leaving the authentication container as the base dn as well so in a lot of documentation i was looking at you can actually select this um, if you have the entire thing set up and then click your authentication uh, containers or you could just do since I have all my uh, user accounts in the OU users uh, OU I would do uh, OU equals users DC equals test and DC equals com now I couldn't get it to work that way um, because it, the PF sense kept querying weird so I just had to do the base DN as the authentication container you might have to do the same as well but you can always try your OU that the users are countering first so if you have users in the OU users uh, OU, you would just do OU equals users and then OU equals test, OU equals dot com, whatever it is for your setup. Now from here, we're going to uncheck this anonymous bond or bind. And uh, you're obviously going to put your bind account here. So mine is going to be Joe Rogan. He's going to be doing all the uh, querying for us today and then put in that bind account password. And this has to be able to uh, read the uh, base DN and anywhere your authentication uh, containers are mapped to so it has to be able to read at least have read privileges initial template just leave it as open LDAP and then from here we're going to go into username attribute so in my case in order to find a username uh, the attribute they're going to be looking for is UID um, so that is the username here so UID and in this case I want to switch that to that as well so this would be UID. It's most likely going to be the same for yours, but you're going to want to verify what your attribute is that identifies the username uh, for your accounts. Now group naming. So in this case, for a group of names, we are going to put it as CN. And I think this actually stays the same for Postix group as well. 
And then now we want to identify how EF Sense is going to identify membership of a group. So in this case, the users are going to have the attribute of member. So this is basically going to tell PF Sense how it can identify if a user is part of a group, what attribute they're going to be looking for in the group's object. And of course, they're going to be looking for that member group. And if I go over here and actually go to PF Test, which is the group of names objects, the way it identifies members is with that member attribute here. And it's actually using the full DN of those accounts. So we're going to want to remember that. So I'll leave it as member. You're going to check RFC 2307. You are going to enable this, which essentially tells it to add the full DN when it searches for members, which is the case we want because that's what we're that's how we're identifying our members by the full DN. And then you're going to want to put this as group of names. This basically is what object class uh, is used for object for group objects, and it's going to be group of names. We'll enable this so that we can use special characters in our passwords and we will press save. And that's the first step. Second step is going to settings. You're going to want to make sure that you select the authentication server you just configured. So in this case, test LDAP group of names, and then we can do save and test. And hopefully you're finding something. Now, if you haven't found anything, you're going to probably either want to check your firewall, maybe double check your bind credentials um, and see if you can get this test to actually uh, go green. Main thing is probably going to be the bind, either not having privileges or password, or you just uh, messed up your IP address of your LDAP server. Now, if all that checks out, you're going to want to go ahead and go to users. I'm sorry, you're going to want to go ahead and go to groups. And from here, you're going to want to add a group. Hey guys, quick note here, make sure you guys subscribe and drop a comment down below. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Raspberry Pi 5 to one of my supporters. I appreciate you guys, but let's go ahead and get back to the video. So I've actually already added the group here. So for my group of names object, it is named PF test, PF underscore test. And the group here has to match up. So you would just go ahead and do add. I'm just going to edit here. Obviously, give it the name, make the scope remote. You can put a description if you want. And now from here, you're not going to be adding any members and this assigned privileges will not be there yet. Uh, so you would just press save. And then from here, you would be exited out. You'd be back here again. And then you would just go back into that same group we just created. So PF test. And then from here, we can actually go to that assigned privileges. So from here, I would click add. And obviously, depending on the privileges you want, you're going to want to obviously configure and select whatever privileges you want for it. But I'm just given full privileges for it. So I actually selected that. Um, where is it? Web config dashboard, which is all it basically gives all privileges for the user. So I'll go back out of here and go back into it just so you can see it and see he's just getting web config all pages. Now, obviously, you want to modify your permissions for what you want, but that's what I'm going with. Um, and then from here, that's it. Now we just have to test logging in. So I'll go back over here and we'll try log in with the rock and let's see what happens. There we go. So we're logged in. So we'll go ahead and log back out. Now, if you actually are able to log in, well, if you authenticate successfully, but then you get like a red window that says something wasn't assigned. Generally, that means that the PF sense was able to query via LDAP, but it couldn't identify group membership. So it wasn't able to identify what uh, group this member or what group this user is a member of. So it couldn't give it any permissions, either that or your group name and L and your LDAP server and this group name aren't, aren't correctly named the same. They have to be named the same. But anyway, so that's how you do it with group of names. Now, if you want to do it with POSIX group, we'll actually go ahead and go back. And I have a POSIX group example already, which is this one. And honestly, the only difference here is I was actually able to get it to work with the authentication containers. So I was able to put the OU equals users OU and then DC equals test DC equals com. Uh, we're leaving this the same, same bind. Now over here to identify group membership, it's instead being switched to member UID because to identify membership in a POSIX group, in this case, we are using the member UID. And another thing you want to notice is we're not using the full DN uh, for my example. If yours is, go ahead and put the full DN, which you're going to want to, I'll show you how to check that. Um, but if it's not like it is in my case, uh, you'll want to make sure you identify that because you'll check this, of course, for RFC 2307. But if you don't have the full D DN in there, then you won't check this. But if you do, you will check this. So if your postix group looks like this, essentially, where it has the full DN for the users, you'll want to check that. Of course, we'll leave that the same with the UTF and code, and then we'll save it, and then we would log in with it. So. If I do that, I can go ahead and test logging in again and it would be successful. But since I've already got the LDAP server uh, set up here, I'll press save and I would just switch it over to test LDAP, which is the POSIX group one here. Save and test. Of course, I'm seeing all those same users. Close that. And now I will actually go back over and log in again. 
and he's able to log in. Now one third example is using the member of overlay and you're gonna obviously have to enable that module on your LDAP server if you wanna use it. But assuming you do do that, from here, I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So this is one of the test ones that I used to have. I actually have deleted it, so I need to delete it from here. But anyways, the difference is, is this is obviously staying the same as the post postix group one will actually be able to use the authentication container, uh, the OU user will actually be able to identify the OU that the users are stored in instead of just using the base DN. From here, we're actually gonna uh, have the same exact same thing, but the only difference here is group membership attribute is actually gonna be member of, and we're not gonna enable RFC 2307 and then from here, if you're using the postix group or group of names, it doesn't matter, you would identify that here. And that would be it. This is extra example I threw on there. Essentially, if you want someone to be able to log in via CLI, you need to make sure that they are uh, in this group. So this, in this case, it was PF admin at the time for me. And that's gonna obviously have to line up with the group that you create and the local groups that we showed earlier. But you would save that here, and then you would go over to your groups and then ensure that you have that same uh, group created here. Remember the groups have to line up uh, with the LDAP naming convention that you use for your LDAP server. But those are three different ways to configure open LDAP on, on PFSense. And if you have any issues actually troubleshooting logging in, you might wanna actually log into your LDAP server and look at the logs to see number one, if you're even getting any login requests, any buying requests from the PFSense. And if you are, you can actually look at the query uh, for how they're coming in. And I'll show you that here in my case. So this is my open LDAP server and I've already started running the logs on it. And you can see here, you can see that it binds. So Joe Rogan is attempting to bind on port 389 from this IP. And from here, he's using the search base of DC equals test, DC equals com. And then he's looking for this object class here, post six group. And then with a member UID of the rock. And now this is where you might need to mess around with your configuration. I noticed I was banging my head because I couldn't get it to work. And it was because the query was coming in weird. It was giving a question mark member equals, and then it would just leave a star here for anything. Uh, so there's just going to be variations on how the LDAP, uh, on how PFSense might query based on your LDAP server and your setup. So you might have to modify the configuration um, and it might vary a little bit. But for the most part, it should line up with one of the three examples I've given you. But that's it. That's all you have to do to get uh, PFSense set up with Open LDAP. I hope this video was uh, helpful. If you guys have any issues, throw, throw a comment down below. Let me know what it is and I can try and help you out. Make sure you guys subscribe. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Raspberry Pi 5. I appreciate you guys' support. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.